Hello, my wildlings, and welcome back to The Nature of Turnabout. In the last episode, we finally got to hear from our main witness, one Mr. Weaselton, about what he saw at the crime scene. Uh, but the dear Athena has noticed that there's a lot of discord in his poor heart, and he's probably traumatized by what he saw, so we're giving him a little therapy session. You know what? I saw it all, I did. See, I was just walking into the courtyard, minding my own business, as I got on with my work, you see. Uh, nope, there's none of those emotions currently going on. Uh, yeah. And there I see the boss, but that's not what makes me all panicked like. So we've got some sadness and some surprise. That makes sense. Uh, uh, yeah, it's not got any impact. No, that's in bringing down that massive chainsaw on their necks. Why? Mm. Yeah, I guess you'd be angrier watching that, I guess. They were both dead, so I called out in surprise. I also made sure to snap a picture, just in case. And then I called the cops. First time I've done that myself I'm usually the one being called on you know why is he happy about that uh, why am I skipping through this uh, I should have read through that I just skipped through it because my brain was like I need to get back to this and ask him why the fuck he's happy what's with the happiness now that's a contradiction if ever I saw one Really? How odd. I thought you would see the contradiction before. Alright. Not that one then. Oh! <laughs> Whoops. I hit the wrong button. I'll be right back. Sorry about that. I hit the wrong button and wound up in the wrong time and place. Uh, but I'm back to where I'm supposed to be. Ish. I think. Probably. Anyway. Uh, you know what? I saw it all I did. It's fine. Walking down the courtyard, minding my own business. Boss, but that's not good. Why? So sad and angry. Why are you... What? Well, sad and surprised. Why are you sad? Ah, uh, never mind. Hmm. Okay. Why specifically anger here? No. The sadness? Also no. Okay. Remember, it can be... I remember, I say to myself, I need to remember that it can be the lack of a specific emotion. There's no surprise? There we go. Uh, this is odd. Can you explain this, witness? Explain what? You felt surprise when you saw my client. You felt surprise when you saw the bodies. So tell me, why weren't you surprised when you saw the murder itself? The I'm afraid I'm a little confused. Uh, how could he be surprised to see the bodies, uh, but not seeing the attack itself? Uh, there is actually a very simple explanation, Your Honor. He did see my client when walking into the courtyard, and he was surprised to find two corpses with him. But the reason why he wasn't shocked to see the attack was because he didn't actually see it at all. <gasps> Noise level, 0%. Okay, that was quick. Easy enough to do. Bye-bye! His sadness and anger are retroactive. Uh, but since he saw the aftermath first, he could no longer be surprised by the act itself. 
Ah, so that's how it shall be. A very cool analysis, Fraulein. Very cool. So might the witness have been exaggerating within his account? Filling in the gaps, yeah. I mean, I thought I saw it. <laughs> I am afraid, witness, that there is no maybe in the courtroom. You either perform or you do not. It is that simple. It is as Master Yoder said. Help me, I am high on ketamine. But that is not relevant right now. So which is it, Era Weasel? All right, fine. Don't get all in a huff. It's like they're saying, I saw the guy over the body, his chainsaw discarded. But he was the only one I saw. Who else could it have been? The fact is, witness, you didn't actually see the crime occur. Both victims were already deceased when you came across the scene. Which means there was an unknown gap of time between the two events occurring. Which means there was a gap where anybody could have committed the murder. Face it. You weren't the first to find the scene of the crime, Mr. Weaselton. You still have a nasty habit of running blindly into the fire, Air Forehead. Remember, only three other people were there during the time of the crime. And with the two of them dead, the defendant is left as the only possible answer. Ah, oh, right. I almost forgot about that. Still, there has to have been a way. Hmm. Actually, there's a piece of evidence that's bugging me. Something just isn't right with what we know. Really? How? Uh, and what is that, Mr. Justice? Uh, the photograph. The axe is clean of blood. Take a look at this photograph. Clearly the defendant is shown to be clean. Oh, yes. Why is good hygiene an issue here? Hygiene has nothing to do with this. But this does. So, the... Uh... Chainsaw... I think in the autopsy report it says left quite a mess at the scene, so... It would have to be this one, right? The photograph holds a discrepancy with the autopsy report, Your Honor. All right, the court will humor you for the moment, Mr. Justice. Where exactly is this discrepancy? Oh, okay. Uh, left quite a mess at the scene. Your Honor, the autopsy report clearly illustrates just how messy these murders were. These weren't clean deaths. You can see as much in the photograph itself. Yes, and? If my client was the killer... Then surely he'd be... Bleh. Then surely he'd be just as blood-covered as everything else. Oh my! Oh yes, I see your point. It is true that the accused was clean of blood splatter when he was detained. Exactly. If he was the killer, he would have had at least some of the splatter on his body. With the amount of violence displayed in the crime, there is no way he could have avoided it. And remember, the witness never actually saw him commit the crime itself. These two facts point to one another. And that's... And that's that my client is innocent of it entirely. And yet you still miss a vital piece of information, Air Forehead. And how do you figure that? Take another look at the accused in the photograph. It is true that Er Yaxling was not a single speck of blood on his coat, but it isn't spotless. In actuality, he is soaking wet. And what does that have to do with anything? Yeah, that wasn't in my thing. I didn't see that before. Ah, uh, but you see, it has everything to do with anything. Recall that there is a pool in that courtyard, yeah? Oh, one clearly shown in this diagram, if you would kindly recall. I was insinuating that the accused went for an evening swim. I wouldn't go that far. An evening fall would be more accurate. Yeah, he's right. When I called out to him, he was so surprised that he slipped and fell into the pool. 
It would have been funny if not for the two corpses. Agent Sky can confirm his state, as he was still quite soaked on his arrest. I thought that said shocked, which would also make perfect sense. But that still doesn't explain why him being wet yet contradicts my point. He was surprised by both Weaselton and finding the bodies falling into the pool. Yeah, he's going to imply that the blood would have been washed off, but I feel like blood would be more difficult than that to get out of fur, especially if you're, like, investigating the guy. Wouldn't you have checked for any blood that might have stuck around? I don't see the issue, Prosecutor Gavin. You'll need to think a little harder, er, forehead. You bring up a good point about the lack of blood splatter, it is true. But the fact that he fell into the pool suddenly becomes far more consequential. After all, it means that his little swim wiped any trace of the fresh blood from his form, yeah? Hey, do you actually know if the blood was washed away for a fact? Well, line, of course I do. I am no novice in the spotlight. Well, there were traces of blood in the pool found during the investigation, which, of course, would have gone everywhere because it was a messy scene. Which could have easily gotten there through the general splatter. And yet you cannot prove it didn't come from the accused himself. Nor can you prove that it came from him either. That's enough! The music was getting real loud. It was a little much for me. I need a moment to breathe. <gasps> this has clearly become a point of heavy contention. The accused was the only other person known to be there. And there doesn't seem to be any conclusive evidence that they were the culprit either. What is your opinion on the matter, Prosecutor Gavin? As it is, neither party can prove or disprove if the defendant had bloodstains washed away or not. And as you say, our witness's testimony has a crucial hole in what they saw. However, also you pointed out, our judge, the defendant is the last possible suspect still. And so I shall bring us to a conclusion by touching upon the last subject of interest. The motive, to be precise. Hang on a second, but Mr. Yaxling doesn't even have a motive at all. Objection. Don't be so sure, Fraulein. I think that Agent Sky should give us an encore for this, yeah? Yes, a motive has indeed been established. And I will tell you all about it in the next episode. Goodbye, good night, and good luck. <laughs>